everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Do you want to just make something that's easy and fun? Let's do that today. If you just want to make a little quick something, maybe you're post-Christmas, all the heavy-duty crafting has been completed, the gifts have been given and shared, or uh, items have been sold in your shops and things like that, and you're all excited, uh, but you still have the creative fire, the creative energy, but you just want a little project, nothing too complicated. Let's just play with something fun today. Okay, today is also the presentation of my January digi kits. I have five new digi kits to show you, and um, here we go. So the ones uh, that okay. So let me just explain. If you're not familiar with what a digi kit is, they're a collection of five printable pages that you can purchase in my Etsy shop. Uh, download them to your computer. Print them out as many times as you want in your artwork. Use them free at will. Have fun with them. And I think there's 195 now different ones you can pick from. So all sorts of different themes. And these are the themes for January. Okay. So first we have dun, 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 handwritten script. Yes. I have some bigger pages of uh, handwritten script, but I thought it might be fun to have smaller um, little ones so that you can use them for interesting um, additions to embellishments or journal cards or pockets or tucks or you know you know the stuff we like to make so having things in a variety of sizes I love this one because it shows the the imprint of the paper the printing on the other side it's either the bleed through which is kind of cool um, I think we've all received letters like that at some point but all sorts of different handwriting some uh, is uh, tiny, some is, uh, oh, these letters from days gone by, different angles, just fun, different colors, and they're very easy to incorporate in just about any journal, some different languages, um, and uh, there's something about the magic of the handwritten script that is very captivating. Um, it draws you in. It's almost a rarity these days, so it is kind of fun to have a nice collection all together. This is handwritten script. Okay. Oh, we got one more page. All right. You get a lot of them. And uh, lots of fun things to play with. And you just, you could do little upper tucks, lower tucks, kitty corner tucks. What's the difference between kitty corner and catty corner? Does anybody know? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Next one. Okay, I'm a day late and a dollar short for this. But this is baby Jesus. That's right. I was coming across some beautiful uh, imagery. And I thought this definitely needs to be in a digi kit because I think, you know, let's face it, this, you know, he's hip all year round, right? There you go. <laughs> um, oh, okay, so uh, yeah, truth be told, um, I started to make this digi kit and I somehow, it got lost in the shuffle and then I was, I was probably intending to put it out around Christmas time. But you know, there's never a bad day for this. So there you go. I just think the, the artwork and the imagery and the depth and the feeling and they just all wanted to be together in a digi kit so there you go all right so we take a quick look at these so we're gonna what we're, we're gonna do is take one of these digi kits and turn it into something fun and easy and uh, so i want you to just give you a quick peek if you get the newsletter you're going to be able to see these up close if you want to see them more up close just go to my etsy shop and you will find them there uh, this one is called Oh, here's a novel original name, Botanical Florals. That's right. Maybe I'm starting to run out of names. Um, but you can never have too many flowers. I'm a big botanical, illustrative, historian. I'm not a historian. I, liked, I like old pictures of flowers. I think that the artistry and the way they drew them is magnificent and deserves to be enjoyed and shared for generations to come. There, was that deep and meaningful? Because that's how I feel when I look at these flowers. And I just think, I don't know, they're just so pretty. They bring me peace and calm and maybe looking forward to the burst of spring coming forth, what that can mean. Sometimes in the middle of winter, you just need a little flower. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so this is Botanical Florals, if you're looking for that one. Yeah. You can't go wrong with the flower. Okay, okay, this one's a little off the wall, but I know there are llama lovers out there, and I happen to be one of them. This one is called Llama Llama. That's right. And uh, I would like to say I, I attempted to get the personality of the little llama. Um, and the llama, uh, you know, they like to hang out together. Sometimes they're solitary. Uh, there's beautiful illustrations of llamas. Baby llamas. 
baby llamas. They are so cute. Um, they're like ugly cute. You know what I mean? Um, they have this, I don't know. Here's a, This one is really cool. It is, look at the ladies in the back. If you can see them, that looks Victorian to me. This is a Victorian llama. If you've never seen a Victorian llama, you have now. That was a, a really good find. Uh, I think this guy is up in Machu Picchu. Now, some of these might be alpacas, and I'm not really quite sure of the difference. But um, maybe the alpaca is the umbrella term, and llamas and maybe other things fall under that. Not sure, but having fun with the llama nonetheless. Ultimate cuteness of baby llama. Okay, I also like goats. So to me, this is not far from a goat. A little woollier maybe. And, and you know, just, you know, a goat in... Okay, now, this is attitude. Okay, that, there's something that a llama can pull off that uh, is just so gracious. Look at this, look at this. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, I get it. You're maybe not into llamas, but those of you who are, I got you covered. I got you back. <laughs> Oh, just so cute. Just so cute. Okay, so I think you get it about the llamas. And then the last one is uh, a beautiful, uh, I, actually I don't know if he's the illustrator or the writer of the story, but there was a very old story. I got uh, Walter Crane from 1887, and there were magnificent images in here. And I believe I have maybe seen some of these on Victorian trade cards, Victorian stylized advertisements. But let's just, I mean, they're, they're beautiful images. And I just think that these things need to be remembered and not disappear in the midst of everything else because some of them are truly amazing. And they're all beautiful little expressions of days gone by. And I should probably, why am I lifting them all up? I should bring them down here. There, oh, that, well, that would have been good if you did that at the beginning, right, Pam? Uh, but all sorts of different styles. So you could really pull, look at those trees. Look at those trees. You could pull a lot from this. You could have a, a fairy tale. A journal. You could have like a magical illustrative journal. You could have, uh, I, look at this guy. Oh, yeah, I know, right? I mean, who draws like that anymore? I don't know, but it's just very interesting. Very, very, oh, can't see, sorry. Very, very interesting. I don't have my glasses on. I like this guy. Jack Frost sends his herald. Um, look at these guys. Supported by attendant sausages. I mean, that's just, that's just, I don't, I don't know. It's just unique. It's different. It catches your eye. Something not, not seen every day. Look at that. Look at that. That's right. Okay. So very, if you've never heard of him and I had not, and I just came across him and I thought, uh, oh, this is just so beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Tying up her posies. I mean, every one of them is so unique and different. Um, and they're just gorgeous. I mean, this would be beautiful cut for, let me shrink that down a little bit so you can actually see them. Um, for cover art, if you wanted to do a focal picture on the front. Sometimes just getting the focal picture is everything, you know? So these are, these are the images from Walter Crane, 1887. So now we're gonna have some fun. Let me, let me back you up a little here. Let, let's do this, let's do this. Okay, so we're just walking in here. I think I'm going to grab the, um, I'm going to play with these, the handwritten, uh, these handwritten script, and I'm just going to cut some of these up. I'll be right back. Okay, so I, um, I just cut up um, about four out of the five pages of the DigiKit just to have uh, handwritten script, just to have some things to play with. So um, at the ready, got my toys close by. Let's have some fun. Let's do this. Okay, so um, I am going to grab, uh, this is a piece of cardstock. It's a 110 pound weight cardstock. I'm just Thought it'd make a nice cover. And I'm gonna fold that in half. And its dimensions are, because somebody asked me dimensions, I'm, I'm doing my best here. Um, not liking it, but I'm doing it. Okay, eight and a half by 11. Okay, regular standard size. Nothing fancy schmancy. There you go. Okay, and we're gonna make a quick cover, a very easy, this is just an easy project. You know, maybe you wanna give somebody a nice gift or maybe a special little uh, journal for yourself, something like that. You can decorate the cover any way you like, just for simplicity's purpose. I think I'm going to use this. This is a, a piece of napkin that I have adhered to a piece of, this is the question in hand. It's some kind of paper. I don't remember exactly what it is, whether it's parchment paper or wax paper. It just doesn't feel waxy. It feels more like parchment. And I think I ironed it on, and I have no idea how I got them to adhese. Maybe it's some kind of special heat and bond or something like that. But anyway, it's got a little bit of structure. It didn't have to. I could actually put the napkin 
right on here. But I already had this hanging around, you know what I mean? So I thought, let's just, let's just use it. So let me just, yeah, we'll just cut this. Just, we'll just glue it down. Let's just glue it down. And I think Scotch Create glue stick will work very nicely here because it's not too wet. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, like wallpaper paste or something. That's a good way to describe it. And let's just glue this puppy down. Okay, I have to keep remembering, don't do too much, Pam, because you're just doing something free and easy and fun. Okay, and which is really such a nice place for the brain to go when the complication of everything and you've enjoyed that part of it, the depth, the intrigue, the uh, look at the creations we've made phase has passed, and now you just want to play. You just want to play and have some fun. Okay, let's see. Let's hope we do this right. Is there a right? I should probably put it at the top, then I don't have to cut as much. I'll just have to get it on there. Okay, I'll trim. Okay, that's what goes into... Oh, I didn't put it in the middle. There we go. I think I can get it over. I think I can get it over still. Sometimes you have a second. <laughs> Could have put it in the middle, Pam. That would have been easier. Okay. Let me just take these papers, put them here. Well, bring me little cutter over. See, there we go. Right nice and close. I'm just going to trim this to size so everything fits nicely. And there we go. And I think I'm going to fold it in half first before I final trim it, because that way I know it will be the same. Oh, I just tore it. Look at that. There you go. Well, guess what? We get to fix that. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, life in the craft room. Nothing like real life. That's right. It just brings everything home. Well, that's the way my life goes. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, but look. We have a little extra. We can do a repair job here if we had to. We could totally do that. All right, let's do that. Okay, get rid of that. And um, how long do we need? About that long. We could even match up a flower. I could do something like that. Um, okay. Let's just get this going down here. There, a little shorter. A little shorter. It doesn't have to match exactly. It's okay if it doesn't. Uh, all right. Okay, now maybe I'm going to bring in some stronger glue here. I'm just going to glue this piece, actually. And I know my edges will be right where they want to be. And we carry on. We, carry, we march forward into the future, into the unknown, embracing the excitement of where will this take us? We don't know. This is the exciting part. That's right. We're no longer um, blabbering about the past. We are moving into the future. We have a brand new year looking at us. Let's go forward and embrace this puppy. Okay, you get back on there. Okay, here we go. There we go, here we go. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, fold over, fold over. Okay, repair job. Okay, and I could actually run that up and down. Maybe I'll mask it a little bit here with some... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. This is all like... This is just happening as we see it. All right. Um, and we have that. Oh, look at that. I need to trim at the bottom because I have a little excess here. So I'm just going to trim that off. Okay. And it doesn't really matter what size this is. It can be a predetermined size, like a 9 by 6 or um, a, you know, that type of thing. There. I guess it's a little shorter than that, but that's okay. So what did I end up with? Everybody, everybody asked me, okay, what size, is it? What, what size did you get? I got 8 by 5 and a half. There you go. That's, that's, what, the, that's what the good Lord gave me today. So I'm going to work with it. Uh-huh. I need more glue here, apparently. I need more glue. Okay. Mm-hmm. You don't want to stick? I will make you stick. I have my ways. All right. We are going to repair that little issue right now. Hold on. Sometimes little bits of ribbon or trim really come in handy when you have a situation like this, that you would like to seal that bridge for some reason. I have this. I'm just trying these out for size. It has a little bit. This isn't... It's like a muted gold. I think a little gold accent would look really pretty right there. Could do that one. Here's another alternative. These are things that I've picked up in my journey, and I love collecting things. I love going out on the hunt. The hunt is like half the fun. You know what I mean? That's pretty, too. I think that one pops a little bit more. Maybe we'll do that one. Okay. And um, so it's fun because you never know when you're going to use this stuff, and, and um, then you can just play with it. And, and, and this is the year. 2023 to, whoa, look at the big glue gob. Pull out our pretties and uh, we'll use them up. Enough of that saving that stuff. That's right. It's doing nobody any good in your cupboards, in your closets, in your craft room. 
It's as if it doesn't exist if it's not turned into something. It, I know, I know it's nice to have supplies. It's nice to feel like the, the cupboards are full. Um, but sometimes they, it's good to rummage around in there, pull some stuff out, and have some fun with it. Okay, so here we go. And that's what I'm trying to train myself. This year is the year of the purge. Yeah. Um, using what I have, shopping at home. Still shopping out there. Who are we kidding? But, um, yeah, use, because you can't, you can't physically keep bringing stuff in. Because you run out of room. Yeah, so the only way to do it is you, you go deep and you, you release and you create and then you release a little bit more, create some more, and there you go. There we go. There we're out. Nice and nice. Okay, do I need to do it on the back here? I kind of like the way that looks, the way it has a little border. It's kind of cute. I'm not doing anything with that. Okay, so we're letting you all... There, so there's the cover. Dunsies. That was, that was pretty painless and easy. Um, so to assemble... Now, the whole purpose of this is I'm trying to show you how we can use DigiKids in making something fun and quick and easy. So um, I kind of like this on here. I thought that was pretty. It was just, it's a little letter, a piece of a letter written from in 1924. And uh, it says, the work on December 6, 1925. I have kept a careful record of work done and all the exam expenses occurred in the making of this application would draw your attention to the following figures. Okay, so it's something about accounting, but I, I, I don't know. I just, I think it's amazing that people used to write this stuff down. They wrote it down with their little paws. And um, so I'm going to use maybe a brown and a black. Oh, I'm so adventurous. Look at me go. But since there's so much vibrant color going on in the back, I'm just going to keep this more of a neutral, neutral palette here. Just going to give it a slight edging rub around quickly. Nothing fancy. This is just a focal point. Um, we could also nest it on a little bit of uh, material, but I don't know. I just think there's something so simple and beautiful about that. I'm going with it. I'm just going to glue that right on there as is with some Fabrifix. Okay. And Fabrifix, if, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's clear silicone glue. It works on fa between fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. And a lot of glues will work in this case, but this is just a, you know, it's here on my desk. Okay, there we go. Uh, placement of the focal point. You can put it anywhere you like, but there's something about, I think, you you leave more space at the top than on the bottom. I don't know. It's a thing out there. And um, it does not need to be followed, but there you go. Um, all right, so we have that, and that's very good. And maybe just since I'm here, because and I don't know where we're going with this, I'm just going to ink around these edges so they have a little something. You know what I mean? Just like a little something. This is a very... I know, it's all white inside. Oh my God, oh my God. It's okay, it's okay. I have plans for you. Okay, just bending this gingerly back. I don't want to pop all that stuff is the, uh, that I glued on the front. Gingerly, gingerly. Everything's still wet. Everything's still in place. Double checking. We are good to go. Okay. So, let's grab um, some papers. And, uh, you know... The fun is collecting these papers, and I wanted to show you how to use papers that are not necessarily coffee dyed, stenciled, tea stained, anything like that, but maybe something a little bit, you know, like the other papers in life. There are a lot. There are obviously book pages. We can use music pages. Um, I'm just going to collect these together in a clump, I think. Uh, legal pad. And, and you can find a lot of these things at the thrift store or rummage around in your house. You might be able to find some of this stuff. Um, here's just, uh, this was copy paper, regular printer copy paper. I think I was using it to stencil on top of. I got a little bit of the ink on there, but not much. Um, this ledger paper, I would call it more current ledger paper, but it's kind of cool. You know, it has character. Um, here's a, oh, this one. This is a, um, a piece of tracing paper that did get tea dyed, I think, but, and, and once you like tea or coffee dye tracing paper, it has extra crunch. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's really good. If you like the crunch, it's very rewarding. Very rewarding. Dangerously so. Okay, here's some very old uh, newsprint. No, I think I want something whiter there for contrast. Let's put one of these. Um, we'll put a white page here. And, oh, I don't know. We'll just keep, we'll gather a bunch of these together. These are all fun. Very old papers. Okay, something. Oh, and, and you know, sometimes you get these um, printed papers. I guess they're used for letter writing or flyer making, something like that. But those have beautiful imagery on them. They can be used uh, 
in many, many ways. Just another piece of white paper. And, oh, here's a page from some type of educational record book. I thought that might look cool in there. And I'm not going to use that because that's kind of the ones we always use. We're going for something different. Do a little rearrangement here. Okay, I thought I would use this as a center page. Did I put it upside down? I don't know. What's upside down? Okay. And uh, this is a beautiful uh, page from the Wildflowers of the World by Barbara Everard, Everard, E-V-E-A-R-D, E-V-E-R-A-R-D. That's it. And um, this is kind of just a, a page from um, a planner, and I thought that might be fun. Maybe we'll tuck that somewhere in the middle. Look at this. All right. Oh, I have one more. Here's a newsprint. That's fun. You get tucked too. Get in there. All right. So we've gathered our papers, and I'm just going to do a single signature. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 14, and we add this little pup. It's going to be 15 pages. That's plenty for a fun little, a fun little journal to just cruise around with. Where are we? 21. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. Okay, we have that. Let me grab some sta- uh, paper clips. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So one thing you can do is use these giant paper clips. They're really handy to hold everything together quickly and in place. And then you can do some cutting or tearing or sewing in whatever you like. Um, but let's go ahead and just fold this in half. Um, okay, I'm just thinking that this page, I probably want the music to show. So I'm going to flip it over. There we go. The world is better again. Okay, hang on. Getting my pages together. Get it? You want to bring everybody together here. You don't have to, but this is just what I do. Um, okay, bring them in the bottom corner together. Sometimes you have to like, massage them a little bit. Okay, get everybody down there. This guy, for, okay, let me put these together again. And then we are going to make our middle fold. Now you. Okay. Let's grab another big one. Oh. I'll put it onto the cover so I know where that is. Then I'm going to decide where the fold is. Okay, so I, I know what, I know how much I have to do. All right. Fold it over more than I need it, then I'm covered. I'm going to have to c- cut or trim some of this off, and that's okay. I'm going to grab my little handy-dandy, ever-beloved, best tool in the world, bone folder. That's right. Um, probably one of the best investments in paper crafting. Probably the real bone. I don't know why. They put things to good use, right? They had bones, so they put them to good use. I like using the real bone one um, because, I don't know, it just feels it feels more old-worldy. You can get plastic ones in that, but I don't think they had the same feel as the bone. Um, and since the bone's not really doing anything at that point. Okay, so what we can see with everything, I'm sure everything's inside, is... Uh, some stuff sticking out, right? So what do you do? What do you do? You grab a pencil. What do you do? What do you do? You go along and you make a line and you know you're going to cut inside of this line everything off, probably a quarter inch, a quarter inch at least down. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm taking off my cover. I'll lift this up a little bit. I'm trying to show you everything here. Um, bringing back the cutter. I know my cutter, this guillotine cutter, will cut through um, 15 pages of normal weight paper comfortably, but now I've doubled it and it's 30, so I'm probably better off using my craft knife because I can get through more thickness flatly without having to take everything apart, which is like a little bit of a making your life easier trick in the craft junk journal world. Okay, so you, you just line everything up on your craft mat, which makes life so much easier. You see, you, you see, can you see your line? I know I'm far away. Here, let me go a little closer. A little closer. Oop, close. How about, okay, we've got good light. Okay. All right, so I'm going to follow that line, following the line, following the line, and I'm going to go about a quarter inch inside the line. Yeah, just maybe, there we go, right about there. That looks good. Am I lined up the top and bottom? Looks good. And just make sure you're not cutting through a paper clip. You'll know if you are, but you will come to a screeching halt. Let me move my camera. Okay, here we go. 
You don't know how sharp this blade is. We're hoping it's sharp. One, two, three. And you don't necessarily have to cut all these off. You could have folded some in, but for sure simplicity's sake, we're just making something fun and easy today. You can hand scissor these. You can tear these. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with these. Let's see how far down I am. Getting there. Okay. And now one more cut, checking to make sure I don't have a paper clip there, and I don't. I see my line, so I'm, you know, you can line it up, but I, I see my line, and I want to go about a quarter inch in on my line towards the center of the, the clump of paper. Look at all these beautiful scraps we're making here. Oh, so many things we could use with those, or make with those. They can become things I threw. All right, there. Now, if all went well, this should fit inside our little journal. Okay, oh, and it does, look. We've got, yeah, about a quarter inch all the way around, which works really well, very nice. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can put this in here, and I just wanna show you some options, like super easy options. Where'd my super easy option go? Well, hang on. Okay, so I, I grabbed um, some options here, and one of them is, this is a tea dyed seam binding. Very thin, very easy to work with in junk journals. That's why a lot of junk journalers like to use it. It doesn't really add much bulk, but it gives you strength. It's good strength, especially like if you bought new stuff, awesome. If you bought vintage, give it the pull test to make sure it doesn't tear on you. Um, the easiest way to get this together and, and really not do much more than what it is, is just do a basic uh, wraparound binding of what's in here where you're really not doing much more than just tying them in. And what does that do? That allows you the freedom to remove certain pages, add pages, um, things like that. So this is just super simple way to do it. Um, you can also sew it in. You can um, do a lot of other things. You can elastic band them in. You can punch hole here and here and string it and all this like fancy stuff. But now if you come under, if you come under and one is and, and go under again, see the layout here, like under and then under here, making a little crisscross there, then we can capture that roaming. Like this is the bridge. And here are our angel's wings. Okay, so now we can do snug tight, but not tearing. Snug tight, but not tearing. You may have to go a little more tight than you think because you are trying to lasso, oops, not that tight, um, the little clumps of papers. Okay, man, no, no, that's tight, tight, tight. Okay, but snug, but not tearing, okay. And you can always, you can tie a bow and not be committal, you know? It, like, it's not a knot, it's just a bow. And if you don't like the tightness or something, like maybe I went too loose there, um, you can always free it. Okay. And that, that's what, like, we're done. Um, that's pretty, isn't it? That's pretty, is, yeah. And, okay, see how it came out? Just doing a little adjustment. See if you need any little adjustments. If you don't, you're good. I like the twisting. I know I like that. Um, so here's what you want to watch for is your, is your construct strong enough to handle that. So if you do too tight, you can loosen it up a little bit. It doesn't, doesn't have to tear the paper. Just remember that. It just has to hold the paper. Let's just do that. That's so, is that so simple? That's just so simple. All right, we did it. Okay, so now we have our book. And now let's just go ahead and fun and decorate it with our um, little pieces from our digi kit. We've got just a nice little assortment here. And uh, so um, I have a bigger piece and I thought this might be fun to possibly, I think I'm, I feel, I feel compelled. <laughs> I'm gonna fold this in half. Uh, I wanna do a bridge spread. It can be done in the middle and I just call it a bridge spread. That means it's gonna cross it's going to go from one page to the other. You could do it in the center and have it be a, a focal point on the, in the center of the signature, but you can do this on any page. It does not have to be just in the, uh, the center picture, okay? So that can go anywhere, which is kind of, kind of fun, kind of cool. Um, and all right, let's see what you're doing. Okay. I want to make sure everybody's opening here, but I kind of like it in that center one. I don't know. I'm kind of drawn to it. Let's see. We already have folds there. We have folds here. We can do this. Okay, let's just do that. But I'm not going to glue it down completely. You could, but I think I'm going to turn it into little tucks. So I am just going to glue here, here, and here. So this is a double central tuck 
crossing the span of the spine. Very easy to do. Well, probably going to get it. Yeah, you're going to. Okay, should have put it in place first, Pam, and then put the glue down because then you wouldn't be uh, getting glue all over the place. Lesson learned. Don't do it my way. <laughs> don't, don't, don't listen to me. Just see how I fix it. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit of um, random glue in here, but I'm going in there and I'm just rolling off what didn't need to be. Yeah, I think I put glue in the wrong spot. <laughs> okay, that won't be the first time that, that I've done that. But okay, so if you just glue across the bottom and it's, so it's going to be held here and held here so you can tuck things in there, which is nice. Okay, so we have that and... Um, Let's go to the front. Maybe we want to have a nice little pocket or something like that here. And we have some beautiful music and words and notes there. So we want to pick something that's going to be um, somewhat contrasting, something that's going to look different. Or you can like ride with it. That's pretty. I like that. Uh, something that speaks to you. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Possibility. Oh, that's cute. And you can cut these out exact or you can cut them out um, loosely giving yourself some white space around them. And let's just pick a little something. All right. I think I'm going to do an upsy downsy. I don't know, I just feel compelled to do an upsy downsy right on the front, just because we can. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. Well, too bad. All right, maybe this one. That'd be a nice pocket for this side. Right, keeping it simple, Pam. Keep it simple, easy and breezy. All right. Grabbing my brown, and I have a little white border, so I'm just going to come along here with the brown. You can trim that off, or you can ink it up. Those are just some easy ways to deal with the white border. Um, I prefer inking to cutting. I just enjoy the process more, so I'm going with the inking option. It's all good. It's all okay. And um, there we go now. I think I'm going to punch a little thumb hole. Not mandatory, but you're just going to do it. Now, I don't want to lose too much of the, the writing, so I'm going to use the one-inch thumb hole. Okay, there we go. Isn't that nice? That is so nice. It is just so nice. And then I'm just going to do the U-shaped glue, the good old U-shaped glue. All right. So what I'm going to do is place all these first, and in the process of that, they're going to be drying and get all snugly in place. And I can always do more decorating, but I'm just going to cruise on through and and use what we got. Okay, so one. Maybe there's a lot of excitement on there, so maybe I'm just gonna pick something more plain over here. Well, you're kind of plain. Maybe we'll do an upper tuck here. And, and you can do, you know, different edging and, and, and things like that on these. Like, for example, if you have, what time is it? You know when you get lost in the process and you're just having fun and all is going swimmingly well, you forget the time, and that's a good sign because that means you're having fun. Okay, I'm just going to round these. I don't know, I just, I haven't rounded in a while. So this is a, anybody wondered, it's a crocodile corner chomper. And it has a big chomp and a little chomp. And I broke this, I dropped it years ago, but it still works great. So I think I only have, I think I only have little chomp uh, option on here. So I'm going to do a little upper corner tuck here so I can stick something in there. Yeah, okay. All right. Nope, look it, I just glued the wrong side. Okay, stop that. See, see, you know, you just, you, the brain goes one way and then you're gone. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. I'm just going to put, now I've got the glue in the right place. Okay. Then we come back later. All right. This is pretty, isn't it? Um, I think I want to make like a mini one here, like this mini little fold thing right here in the middle and maybe glue this one down completely. I just, I just like the look of that and then just giving lots of room around. So all of this writing, I'm hoping, will entice somebody to write in this journal. And I think that would be fun. Um, now, this is going to be an example, one that's going to be glued down completely. So I want to have a nice, crisp, bone foldery type spine fold crease and get um, plenty of glue. And just go to town. So these are basic. Sometimes you, you know, I, I mean, you do not have to use digi kits. Let's get that out of the way. No, this is just, these are options. These are just optional toys for you to play with. Or if you don't feel like going intricate and you just want to have some fun, you just want to make something for the sheer creative joy out of making it in that moment. Fold that up. Oh yeah, now we're going. There we go. 
All right, that's nice. I like that. Okay, let me get Paige. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, what are we going to do here? I think we're going to do a, a belly band, and it's going to be, I'm going to glue it here and here. And um, I do like the white contrast. Maybe I'll just leave that. Maybe I'll just, I'll black it up on the edges. That's what I'll do. Yeah. You see how the white contrast, and, and sometimes you don't need to always ink if you've got enough contrast there already. And you don't always need contrast, but if you're a contrast sort of gal or guy, you do your contrast and, and you just enjoy it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Belly band in the central zone. And yeah, you can make belly bands on tracing paper. It's okay. Yeah, it, it, tracing paper is, I mean, it's thin paper, but it's stronger than you think. I remember books are made out of thin and thick papers all the time, and we don't necessarily tear them all apart um, when we're reading our books. So, you know, have a little faith in the page. Have a little faith. Okay, there we got there. Oh, I love this. It's probably my favorite piece in the whole thing. Somebody was, if I can get it close enough for you, um, they were writing and drawing little pictures of birds. I love that. I just love that. Okay, now what are we going to do with you? We could maybe make you... A little flip, we could do that. Why not? Oh, I totally forgot this page. Oh, well, hi. Well, I'm gonna put you in here. Make a little flip out of you. Okay. I think I'm gonna use the black here. Yeah, that happens all the time too. You meant to put something in and, oh, forgot it. Totally forgot it's not in there. You can glue it in later. You can tuck it in later. You can clip it in later. You can make an, you can extra, add an extra piece to a page. I'm just gonna glue that right on there. As a little embellishment. Oh, stomach's gurgling. I think I'm hungry. I think I'm hungry. This girl needs a snack. No, you don't, Mom. I know. I know. That's the voice of reason. His name is Sunshine. Although he's already, always down with snacks because he usually gets a snack when Mama has a snack. You know what I mean? Okay, so we have this. So I think I'm going to do a little wraparound. That's right. So this is the removable. Um, things don't have to be permanently placed. Sometimes you can find some cute little different style paper clips, and they bring intrigue and interest and I collect a lot of old world staples I have staples uh, paper clips I have to show them to you because I pull them off of a lot of old items um, and then I just collect them in a bucket and um, that is fun to see the way they were made um, the weight of them the material they were made of they're just darn cool they're just darn cool that's all there is to it okay so now we're going to do an upsy downsy because we're going to oh maybe no, we're going to do a kitty kitty upsy downsy yep there we go so upper tuck, lower tuck, and then something can go in the middle. So I'm just going to glue at the top and glue at the bottom, and I'm going to leave the rest. But I do think I will ink in black. Like I said, you can trim around these closer if you want, but I try and leave a little white space in place. You want to play with the white space. I'm not in frame. Sorry. Maybe make it a little smaller. Okay, where am I? Okay, is that all right? Um, you let me know. I can hear you. Just, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I do. I want you to be able to see what's going on. I hope you're having fun out there. Are you goofing around? Are you having a good time? Just make sure you're having a good time. That's all that matters. Okay, let's just... You can make these into pockets as well, which will give you a little more um, security. It keeps everything in place. But you can also just do the very simple, but very classic upper and lower tuck. Minimal gluing, quick application, much fun to be had, and we carry on. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, and we flip. And then, oh, I think I want something on here. Oh, the cream would look nice on there. Oh, look at that pop. Oh, we do like that. All right, so, and then that, that was just here, right? Was that, that was just there. Now we need to, how many do we have left? I have a whole bunch. Oh, I, I kept these two together because I thought I'd make a nice little fold. So you can do a lot with this. You can, uh, this concept, if you keep them together, you can put it here and it can just open, but you can't see the back. But what you can do is do a hangover, which I just call it a hangover because you can just take this and put it on the top and just leave it as is. If you have a nice crease, it'll stay all by itself. If you feel more secure putting a paper clip, you can. But they can take it off and write a little note. Maybe it'll be a, a gift card note or a calling card or something fun. You can put something inside or leave it blank for the recipient. Totally your choice. Just a little ink, nothing. Nothing too fancy. Nope. 
Okay, I'll put one of those little fun paper clips. All right, that's cute. Oh, oh gosh, we're, oh, we're about almost halfway. No, we're doing good. We still have lots of things to play with here. Tons, tons. Okay, there we go. Now I know what I have. Okay, okay, so uh, let's do what I call the sideways pockets. They're always fun. Let's get some little ones. Maybe similar size ones would be one, two, three. You're all of similar size. Okay, so this, and I think I will trim these up a little bit more. And my scissors are located here. Thank God. Okay. Just because I need the pieces a little bit smaller. And you can trim these down if you want. That's not a problem. Just make them a little small. Just a little smaller. Because we're going to make a, like a little triple, triple pouches or triple pockets coming out the sides. Which might be fun. Okay, now this one is very neutral on the edge. So I might add some black just to give it harmony with the other one that has a little bit of a black border. Where are we? Okay, that's all right. We're just having way too much fun. I'm not stopping. This is a little 1893 note. So cool. I just love those times. Yeah. I love all those old times. I can go right back to Viking days. I can, I mean, I admit, caveman, I don't know. Maybe that's not my groove. But Viking, oh yeah. <laughs> Watching too many TV shows, Pam. Too many. Back away from the telly, back in the craft room. Um, yeah, I watched them all. Yeah. There we go. Anybody watching The Witcher? I like the show. I heard the guy is leaving. Ah. Oh, well. <laughs> Okay, we carry on back in the craft room. <laughs> okay, so we have this one, this one, oh, yeah, try. put you in the middle. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's really cool. Now you can do a lot of things with this. This could be individual little pockets, or you could just glue them down on this end and have it be a triple but separated side tuck. So I think I'm going to do that. I can put a bigger item in there, which I have more of bigger items, but if you have little tickets and you know, stamps or whatever, things like that, you can definitely use uh, the individual pocket idea as well, um, which works very nicely, very nicely. Okay, and these are so easy to do. It's like nothing. Oops, and then you can leave this as your, I can see glue oozage, and I, oozage, and I know that's gonna glue to my next page. I'm gonna roll it off now. Save myself a step later. Look at me being so proactive. It's always a good idea to recheck your journal. And then I can tuck something in here. See that? Like a whole page I can tuck in there. And well, I'll, I'll try and tuck some things in there. So just get an idea, you know, fun stuff you can do. Um, and then, oh, that, I love that. And sometimes just something at the top. Like a, uh, like an upper, an upper tuck. Like, uh, no, this is an upper pocket. This is an upper, this is a wider piece. So something can go inside there and be tucked in and we can tuck something wonderful. And we are in the middle. These, uh, did they glue down? Probably, not bad, not bad. Okay, and I can tuck things in here, see that? Going to the back side now, we're going into the dark half. Here we are, it's the back side. Okay, continuing with the fun. All right, so maybe, 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 I don't want everything to be a glue down or a pocket. Maybe I want some of these to be journal cards and things like that. So let's make some of those. Okay, so I guess in the grand world of the terminology in junk journal land, which means really a whole lot uh, nothing, but um, if you do this to it, it instantly becomes, is that upside down or right side up? Oh my God, I now have created a journal card, or tag, because I gave it the tag corners. Yeah, so I know it's a weird shape, but I'm okay with that. Mm, that's nice. And um, maybe you want to hang on. Okay, so I have this. Maybe you have one of these handy dandy, very expensive tools imported from China um, of a regular old boring paper punch, but is um, can be a paper crafter's best friend. Oop, something not right here. Okay, and I'm just gonna punch a hole. And you can color the hole. Um, if you have a Q-tip, Q-tips come in 
pointed or round, round end, probably other shapes, but I know not of these. So, oh, I think I want to do brown first. I think I want to do brown and black. Brown. Oh, I'm just going to co-mingle. What the heck? It's only a Q-tip, right? So I've got a little bit of color on either side. Oh. It just sort of helps the so the person can see where that is kind of cool, isn't it? That's just, yeah, easy. Who needs fancy tools? That's right. And uh, then you can put a little something if you want it there. This is a nice little something I have here. That might look really cute. Okay, so let's try that. And you can do the old um, make um, one bunny ear. Bunny goes through the hole. Then the kids follow mom through that little magic place. And there we have. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but... Uh, that's what happened, and, and there you go. And if you're unsure if it's going to stay, you can always, always, like, put a little dab of glue there or something if you want to. Um, or you can tie it in a knot. Knots work fine, but this is a little bit of a flatter stylize of a knot, so it doesn't go anywhere. And then maybe I just want to clip that there. Yeah, just clip it so they have something to play with. And uh, it's removable, and they can do something with it, and it's fun. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, we have a little page here. Okay. And, um, okay, so we can also do, let me see what I have here. I need to have, I need to put out what our options are so I can see what I have. We can do what I call the shelves. Very shelves is a very easy thing anybody can do. Doesn't take much um, effort. It's pretty easy. Okay, so I think I'm going to ink just around because it gives me stuff. It gives me stuff. It gives me contrast. And with this, to indicate the shelfage of it all, I might I might do the uh, thumb hole maneuver. Yeah, because it looks like more of a pocket or a shelf. Um, I guess once I put the thumb hole, it's more of a pocket. But, you know, who cares? Whatever we call it. It's a thing and we, we get it. Uh, all right, because we, we know what this means. There's a little something in there. There's a little something special in there for you. Uh, maybe put the bigger one on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure when you put your other one, you got enough headroom for whatever you're going to put in there. And I think I will do traditional U-shaped pocket glue here. So I'll put probably a smaller item in here. It's nice to let these little pockety things dry before you go ahead and um, put your stuff in because if you have nice ephemera or some, something special or a picture, you don't want it to get stuck in there. Oh my God, I've gotten so much stuff stuck and had to tease it apart, tear it apart, repair everything. Oh, I've been there a million times and it still happens because I get excited and I just want to keep going. Um, okay. So these are nice things that you can put on blank pages. And then when you put the ephemera in there, it even covers more of the white. So you're not stark looking so starkly white all the time. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with the stark white, but um, just, you don't, you don't necessarily have to feel and cover and stencil and rubber stamp everything. Sometimes it can just breathe and be, breathe and be, yeah. All right, so uh, maybe now we'll make a couple just journal cards because, you know, that's always nice to have maybe a little collection. Let's make this maybe the, the collection of three. And, uh, okay, I'll just ink these up so they have a little pop. Now, I may just round all of these corners just so they look like a family. Yeah, we're giving them some uniformity. Uh, why am I going New York? I have no idea. I was hanging out with a New York uh, friend. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> oh, gosh, you're rubbing off on me. Um, yes, my dear friend Linda and her beautiful New York accent. Um, hi, Linda. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. And then I think I'm going to round them. See, I should have rounded first. But no, no, I'm rounding after because that's the way we do everything here. I think there's they, there's a word for that. But um, it's okay to go back in and refix, readjust, replay with things. So this really, this little um, journal is just honoring writing, handwriting, script. Um, I'm maybe encouraging others to write. That's that's actually what I'm kind of hoping for here. So maybe we'll do... Now, the, see, you could do something on the back. You can get more dramatic. You can ink the backs. We are almost done. And, uh, and you can just keep going from here, but this is going to give you a basic construct, fully decorated enough, and then you can tuck things in. But let me see. Okay, so we have that one, this one, 
and this one. And I'm just going to round them like that, keeping them all unattached. They're officially journal um, cards meant to be played with. Something is ticking. Okay, we'll, we'll leave that page. I think we'll come a little further into the book. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah, I'm just going to paperclip this entire cluster there. There, that's fun, right? Because then there's something to play with when they get in here. They can pull those out. How many pages we got? Eh, probably two or three more. Okay, so here. Um, and you don't, and not everything has to be a pocket or a tuck. Sometimes you can just glue things straight down. Not meant to be anything more than what it is. Maybe, and you can put them on an angle. And that can look a little bit different. That can also be turned into a belly band if you wish. But I think this one I'm just going to glue right down. Okay. There, just for the simplicity of it. Okay. I've got just a couple pages left. Maybe do one more here. And this guy. This guy's a cute little guy. He has shape. He's, been, he's going places. He's doing things. Let's turn him into a little booklet. All right. I'm just coming along here. I'm just going to cut out a shape. Yes, I'm fussy cutting. Doesn't happen all the time, but I will do it. I will do it in an emergency. Okay. Just because I'm not a good fussy cutter. And probably if I fussy cut more, I would be a better fussy cutter. But I think it's a gene you're born with. It's like the sewing gene, right? Yeah, no. You can look. It's a scale. You just got to do more of it and quit fussing, Pam. Just get in there and fussy cut. Fuss, don't fuss about the fussy cutting, right? Some people love fussy cutting. And I've, I've gotten into my groove with fussy cutting before. I've, I've fussy cut with the best of them. And then I get like all wonky because um, I don't do straight lines well hand, freehand. But um, it, it, you, can, you can inking the edges of things blurs the edge and it takes away, it hides a lot of the inaccuracies of me. <laughs> yep, it, they do. Okay, so I'm folding this in half. I just wanted to make like a little simple booklet and um, maybe I'll make it match that side. That would be brilliant, brilliant. Um, and make it look like it came together. Okay, okay. Okay, and then just come in there with a little extra ink where you need it. Fix that little corner. Okay. Okay, and maybe even, yeah, there we go. Now we're taking it home. If you see a little, if you have this, if you have this, do this. Yeah, there you go. You got that up there, you do that too. That's what you do. A little more ink on the side. Okay, so you got that there, you got that there. Oh, maybe we're just going to do a little wraparound. That would look cute. So it's a sideways booklet. Just a little extra place for people to write, take a note, um, have some fun with. And then maybe... We will put something on the back cover, maybe a nice pocket so they can store things. Maybe they've been thinking about, you know, things that they want to do. That's kind of pretty. That's a little festive. That's um, another language. I don't want to guess it, but I'm thinking maybe Hebrew. Not sure, but uh, I think it's, it's cool and I think it's really awesome. So it's going in. It's going in. Okay. Beautiful writing, beautiful script. Lots to play with. And just a little corner. Looks like the glue is going to go here and here on the back. I have to remember that. Here and here. You have to tell yourself that sometimes. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And we're down. There we go. So, we are done. And now you have this nice little thing that is ready to be stuffed. Or you can go ahead and stuff it yourself. A lot of fun things, very easy to play with. One digi kit didn't even use the whole digi kit. I still have leftover pieces and I have a whole page I didn't even use, okay? Go back and make sure that nothing is glue stuck together, that your pages all come apart. And then you can play with it another day or just hand it off as is to the universe. And um, there you go, folks. So I hope you had fun making this little guy with me. You saw the digi kits for January. Um, if, the, if you are so inclined, have some fun with them, be playful, and invite newness into your world. And um, there are worse vices out there, so this is not a bad one. <laughs> you know, if you're a paper hoarder, paper lover, there you go. And uh, all right, so let me see if I can find Mr. Snuffles. Hold on. 
Okay, do you have a, a, pup, a public date, a pup date? Is it a pup date or a public service announcement today? Today, <coughs> today is a pup date. Yes, I have a pup date. I would like to tell everybody when mom and I watch TV, I like to play with her head. Yeah, I get on the back of the couch and I go by her head and I get in her hair and I pull it and I pull it left and I pull it right and sometimes I pull it out. <laughs> She's not so happy when I do that, but I do it a, a lot. And, um, uh, okay, so I like to play a lot and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, it's the truth. And I think it's good exercise. And mom needs more exercise, so I'm encouraging her to play. And get out. Mom, we need to go on more walks. You're getting slacking off on the walks, Mom. Can we have some more walks? Okay, you're right. I have been slacking off on the walks. That's totally the truth. I Okay, I will commit to you and the world. We will do more walks in 2023, okay? Yay! Yay, more walks! Okay, great. All right, there we go. Okay, um, anything else? Mm, mm, no, going back to sleep now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I... Okay, thank you. Bye, everybody. Love you. Happy crafting. Okay. Words from sunshine. Okay, so that is life here. I'm hoping life is going well for you and you're enjoying yourself no matter what you're doing. Um, make sure you have some fun no matter what form that comes in. I'm just going to make a tie while I'm talking here. A little sash. To, see, my my journal is chabbers, so it's, it's wanting to open, so I'm just going to tie something around it to swaddle it. We're going to swaddle this, this little mama here. Um... This is just um, tea dyed uh, seam binding. It's the same from which I from which I lassoed the signature pages, and I'm just gonna tie a little bow on it. So if you don't know, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. Hey, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter, and um, you get a free digital image emailed to you every month along with a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is, how to use it. You can print it out and put it in your junk journals. You can change it, change the wording, change the font, do what you like. And um, there's a uh, page list of ideas and a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Junk journal tips, updates from me, new DigiKit pictures. Um, yeah, but coming up in January, we're going to have a few surprises, and I'm kind of excited about it. And uh, so stay tuned. I am going to be selling my neutral journal, which we completed in January. Um, da, 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 da. Not sure exactly when in January, but stay tuned for that. And there might be a video that might just appear in the Etsy shop. Haven't decided on that one yet, but it will be for sale. And also, there's some other fun things that will be for sale in uh, January. So as soon as I um, get my act together, um, I will present those to you. So I hope you like them. Um, looking forward to spending 2023 with you for an awesome, uh, fun year of adventure, paper making, paper creating, paper crafting. Let's go forward and have some fun. Come check out my Etsy shop, my Amazon shop, my merchandise shop. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, all the links are down below in my videos. And uh, you can find me on Pinstagram. Pinstagram! Thank you. That's a much shorter way of saying that. I am on Pinstagram and um, I am on Facebook group. <laughs> That's just Facebook and Facebook group. Uh, Pinterest and Instagram. And I think Oh my God, I think I'm even on TikTok somewhere. Um, I haven't done any of those in a while, but they're out there. And uh, yeah, come and join the Facebook group. There's a lot of fun to be had over there. We're doing weekly and monthly challenges also, seeing what you guys make from these videos. So take care, everybody. You have an awesome crafty day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.